I'm not really good at battle royales, but you know what I am really good at? Super hyper neon colored craziness. So I set myself forth on a challenge. Play Fall Guys and record every single game until I got my first win. This is how I got my first crown in Fall Guys. I loaded up the game, customized my character, and prepared to drop. Game one loaded in, and it was the Seesaws, something which I had seen and was one of the first things that I knew about this game and was potentially going to be extremely dangerous. The trick with this is just don't fall behind, because the further back you get, the more difficult it's going to be to get through the seesaws. I was able to qualify for this one, so my first game wasn't a complete failure. That was until I got to the egg scramble. It's a three-team minigame where you have to collect the most eggs, with the gold ones being worth five, and I was stuck on yellow team, which pretty much guaranteed my failure. I don't know what it is with the meme, but it completely sticks. By the end of the egg scramble, my team had two whole eggs eggs so i was eliminated in the second round of my first game game two was back to the seesaws this happened to be the game that i'd be playing a lot for my first game and then off to rollout which is a bunch of different concentric areas of the cylinder spinning and the easy goal is to not fall down that was pretty well enough i minded my business and didn't interact with many other players then to tiptoe which was part memorization part finding the correct path and part everybody pushing you off and murdering you as soon as you got close to the front. One fall is all it takes, and unfortunately, I was eliminated. Game three was a new first game. It was DoorDash, jumping over a bunch of opening and closing doors. If you timed it right, you were able to work really well, and I was able to go down that slime slide at the end and qualify for round two, which was back to rollout. And while I was still trying to avoid other players because I saw a lot of pushing, I miscalculated a jump and killed myself. I am my own worst enemy. Game four was a new first course, the Whirly Gig. This is a bunch of different spinning platforms and bars, and they just really want to concuss me. But this one in the center launched me off to the side, and then that bounced me around a little bit to give me a bit of a boost, so I qualified for round one. Round two, back to the team games, and back to yellow team, and a new one, tail tag. This is two minutes of pure stress as you're running around being chased by other players, or chasing other players, where everyone has the exact same movement speed and really it's kind of hard to cut anybody off with how much chaos is going on in these maps you really need to hope for somebody to hit a trap and then catch them while they're down round three was all about avoiding walls that were coming up on a little rainbow track there's somebody on top of one of the tracks which is something you're going to see a lot of and i'm definitely going to call out the people who are cheating up on that rail that is entirely bullshit and in the process of being frustrated at that i miscalculated thought there was a gap at the end of this purple wall and was pushed off to my death game five was a new first course, Dizzying Heights, with a bunch of circular spinning discs. It makes sense to go in the direction that everything spins, but I don't really listen. Also, pro tip, there's a jump to that last platform, which you wouldn't really know based off of how it's set up, and if you miss it, you fail, and you get eliminated. Game six, I was back to the seesaws, and I'm getting reminded why I'm not a huge fan of the seesaws, but I was able to make my way through and qualify in the top 10 somehow, despite some really early failures. Round two was ball hoarding, much like egg hoarding, but you know, bigger and more ball shaped and less egg shaped. This three-way game went through five different overtimes, thankfully only with blue and red on the cusp of elimination. At one point in time, an unofficial truce was struck and yellow and blue decided to work together to eliminate red by scoring it three to three to one. Round three was a ring dive where you had to jump through floating hula hoops on helicopters in order to score points for your team. I thought we were doing okay in the beginning. Yellow took an early lead, but at some point in time, I blinked and we went from first place to last and it was just completely unrecoverable. I was eliminated. Game seven was a new first course, the hit parade, running through these spinning bars and then through a bunch of corkscrew gates, which are opened by players, so go with the crowd on that one. And then through these dumbbells on strings, which one just completely concussed me, and before I could even blink, I was eliminated. Game eight was back to gate crash, and I got stuck on the center gate, but was able to quickly recover and qualified for round two. Round two was DoorDash, and this video is totally not sponsored by DoorDash. Don't use 
use the code Lagundo anywhere because I'm pretty sure it doesn't work. But thankfully, you know what works? Staying in the middle of the pack and avoiding everything, I qualified. Was a memory matching game. And why is there memory matching in my crazy platformer? I didn't pay attention and was eliminated on the first round. Game nine is back to gate crash and I was able to calculate my jumps just perfectly and made it just under the wire in order to qualify for round two. Round two was back to team tail tag. And like I said, this game is just two minutes of stress and running around, but I was able to maintain my tail and made my way through. I feel like I'm starting to get the hang of this. Oh no, it's the memory game again. I'm going to die. This time, instead of worrying about fruit, I memorized the background colors for the different areas and I was able to actually qualify and move on to round three, which was tiptoe again. I got an early lead by taking a random dive off in one area and qualified for the final round, my first final round. This could end up being a really short video, but you probably just hovered over the time bar and saw this didn't go too well. I was running around on the hexagons trying my best to maintain only one at a time and give myself a good area where I could maintain on a good time on one level, but miscalculated and on my jump on level three, missed level two and level one and fell directly into the slime. Game 10 was back to the whirly dig and that first bar hit really set the tone. The helicopter to the head didn't really help much either, but I was able to qualify and survive. And then I was back to my nemesis. It was time for the eggs again. This time, my team's PTFO'd and we were able to get ourselves into first place pretty quickly. We also collected all the golden eggs, giving ourselves a four point lead on the first place team and a nine point lead on the third. Everything was looking pretty solid. We were playing defense despite having more red players than yellow in our pit. We were able to maintain a good amount of score. I got the gold egg in on once or twice and we were able to remain in game. I was feeling really good about this one and then it crashed, so that's unfortunate. I was back the next day on game 11 and back to the hit parade, making my way through, and this time, you know, I got eliminated really quickly. My first game back was just always bad. Game 12, back to dizzying heights, and I still haven't learned my lesson in walking in the opposite direction all of the spinning, especially on the second layer. I fell down to the lower level, which I actually find kind of easier sometimes, and was able to recover quickly and just under the wire qualify at 35 out of 37. Back to ball hoarding, and this one hopefully wouldn't go into five overtimes. I very quickly got on the assault, but we had zero points and I was eliminated. Game 13 was back to gate crash and I think I finally have the timing on this one down. Except for that last one, it usually takes me one try, but I was able to get in with about nine players left. So I'm feeling pretty good about that first entry level course. Round two though, tail tag, not the biggest fan. Two minutes of stress and running and quick little successions, especially if you have three people close together with each other, but I was able to qualify. Round three was a brand new game, Fruit Shoot with the C instead of an S, even though they're shooting fruit at your face. I was clobbered by a peach and then a pear, then a watermelon, and I did not make it to the top in time. Game 14, back to the whirly dig, and I'm starting to totally not learn my lesson on those entry level platforms, but I did hit a really solid run on the second wave of them and qualified in the top 15. Round two was more ball hoarding, and for once I wasn't on yellow team, which made me feel superior in some way because we actually won this game outright with double the score of the next place team. Game 14 was back to the wall jumping, and despite these two awful people on the right side cheating, I played legitimately and was able to recover. Round number three, and it was time for tiptoe, and I wanted to try something a little bit different. Since all the fighting is right at the front of the line, I wanted to wait just a few seconds and let them get ahead so I could see the path and not have to worry about fighting with people. Unfortunately, if you're in a race and you intentionally let people get ahead of you, it doesn't normally end well, and I was eliminated. At the end of game 14, due to the battle pass, I did get a crown, but this felt like a Fyrick victory. This wasn't real. I did get the cool, super sexy stealth skin in the interim, but I wasn't going to be settled until I got that crown for real with a win. Game 15, back to dizzying heights and back to the rotating platforms. I forgot that there was a jump at the end there, but I was able to remember for my second life through and qualified with a little bit to go. Round two was the seesaws and they came back with a vengeance. I thought with fewer players, it would be a little bit less of an arduous task to come back from behind, but it also meant that you had less of a margin for error. So I was eliminated pretty handily. 
Round 16 was dizzying heights, but you've seen this one pretty often. I qualified without a sweat. The new game this time, though, was Slime Climb, and I went for those MLG Pro Strats hitting off the bounce on the first layer to get a quick head start above everybody else and was able to make my way through. Only really having an issue right at the end where I was almost knocked off by that one little area but qualified my way through. Back to the wall climb, back to more people cheating on the wall. I really hate them. I'm not salty about this whatsoever. But in playing the game the correct way, I was still able to qualify. Round three was soccer, 5v5. And within the first 10 seconds, much like my Rocket League experience, I was down two goals. I made an amazing save on this quick shot to put it up to even split. And despite one more sacrificing save where I fell into the goal to end it, I did also kind of contribute to the own goal where we lost. Game 17, I fell far enough behind on the Whirly Dig that I knew I really just needed to figure out how to learn that center approach, and I just didn't learn that center approach. Game 18, me, the seesaws, fighting forever. That's probably a haiku, but I'm not sure. In playing rollout, I still try to avoid other players. I find the pushing to be the biggest detriment, and half the time when I'm trying to kill somebody else, I end up killing myself. I went for the player right at the end here against my better judgment, and yeah, I killed myself, eliminated for game 18. Game 19, it's the seesaws. It's always the seesaws. However, I was up there early enough that I got to participate in one of those finish line emote parties, so I'm kind of happy about that. It made my day. The ball hoarding game, however, being put back on yellow team and somehow yellow team almost being totally comprised of people who won't play the objective, I was eliminated with zero points again. DoorDash for game 20, and I thought I was doing well until this last gate here. Well, where? Just watch. But I wasn't gonna let that stop me. I dropped in for game 21 and I was back to the hit parade. The early area was a pretty solid start. I have that figured out, but those wrecking balls at the end point are just the death of me. And one hit, followed by another hit, followed by a final hit, and I was pretty much set up for elimination. The seesaws, why is it always the seesaws? I find myself qualifying at 30th or 35th place on the seesaws far too often in this video. Back to rollout, where again, I'm just trying to avoid other people and mind my own business. And it worked out for me and I qualified. For fruit shoot, for some reason, I always seem to fall off the back of it at the very beginning and that sets me up at a huge disadvantage. Getting pummeled in the face by a peach and then I think that's supposed to be a cinnamon stick and then an orange, that didn't help either, I was eliminated. Game 23, I was reminded for the Whirly Dig, do not mess with the center and just quickly took the long way around. I was able to qualify within the top 10, so I'm starting to get noticeably better at this game, but it's not quite enough for me to get that crown just yet. Because in round two, when I was back to the wall climb, I mistimed my jump, landing on that little bar platform that you're supposed to jump over, which immediately carried me off the platform and to my death. Game 24, it's the seesaws. Again, I'm gonna have nightmares over these things, I'm, I swear. But I was able to pull ahead from the pack and qualified in sixth place this time. I don't think the qualifying at a higher ranking actually sets you up at an advantage for subsequent games, but I'm gonna feel like it does, so I like it. But it was back to the memory game where it's all about my brain smarts instead of my platforming ability, and I somehow made it through. For a second, when I was standing on this platform with just two guys, I thought I was gonna be dead, but we just had one that was far less crowded. Next was individual tail tag. And for the chaos of team tail tag and the stress of it, this just amplifies that to the nth degree. I was able to snatch a tail very near the end, but then with only 30 seconds left, it was stolen from me, and being the same run speed as the person I was chasing, I just wasn't able to get it back. I was eliminated. This is a reminder, this, this video is totally not sponsored by DoorDash because they don't think I'm cool enough for a code yet. However, I had an amazing run on Fruit Shoot and got my first victory in this game mode. Turns out, if you don't run up the middle where things are getting launched, you actually make it off pretty well. Back to the wall climb, and no one cheated on the walls this time. We were able to all play in the middle and fairly and make it through. Soccer this time around was only 4v4, and I was on blue team, which I think sets me up for victory. I don't know how this meme turns out to really hold true, but we were able to quickly get two points on the yellow team immediately, followed by two more points 
followed by two more points after that. Almost everybody on the yellow team quit, and we actually ended up just hanging out in the middle. It was kind of mean looking back at it now. Game 29 was Royal Fumble. Think team tail tag or individual tail tag if it's only one tail. And I have similar problems with this one as I have with the other ones. And I still like the idea, but there needs to be some sort of way to catch up because we followed one person around for the full two minutes and that was the whole game. It never changed hands and they won. Seemed like random chance. I was so off put on my second final round failure that I wasn't even able to make it through Hit Parade for game 26. I was eliminated immediately. That was all I did that night and I got on the next night to continue my journey towards a crown. And in game 27, my first game back, I was back to the Whirly Dig and I just got utterly messed up by that fan in the center. Never go through the center and I was eliminated. Game 28 felt good. I was on the seesaws again, and despite some initial early failures, I was able to qualify pretty quickly. Then in the memory matching game, my background pattern matching idea worked out pretty well. When it came to the slime climb, my MLG pro strats and bouncing up that triangle pad set me up for success, and I was able to stay ahead with some minor mishaps at the very end, but is able to qualify in the top 10. I'm starting to feel really good about this game. Then I realized that we're getting into soccer and we're a player down. We're gonna be at a player disadvantage in a team-based game. It feels like it shouldn't choose this in this opportunity. However, we also very quickly put ourselves up two goals and then a third and then a fourth and then a fifth and an eighth and the game ended 10 to 1 despite us being down a player it was just an absolute massacre game 28 was my next final game and it was back to hexagon i had a good idea of what i wanted to do this time around making sure that i was staying on each level as long as possible and running my way around each track i avoided any areas where i'd have the multi-level fall immediately until I got down to this final gold area. I was jumping from pad to pad in a strategy that I had seen other players using in order to maintain and extend the duration that they can stay on each area, but I was just over something that had nothing beneath it, and as soon as I fell on the gold area, I was eliminated. Game 29 was once again sponsored by DoorDash, where I made it in as 42 of 42 and barely made it to the second level. I made my way to rollout, and within the first few seconds of rollout, I was grabbed by someone and thrown off the edge Mufasa style, murdered and eliminated. Game 30, back to Dizzying Heights, and I failed forward with a quick little whack from the back based on this bar, and then another one. This actually strategy of getting hit seems to kind of work, you know. I carry that momentum quite literally, up until qualifying. Back to rollout, I was not getting murdered again and made sure to watch my back and was able to survive. Round three was back to the individual tail tag, which I learned quite a bit from the first time around and just stayed as far away as I could from any potential attackers, jumping into hammers to get hit to gain distance and I qualified for round four. Round four was back to tiptoe and I once again went for my wait just a little bit to see if they can find the path for you strategy. But this time, instead of waiting back at the beginning, I just stayed a few squares back, far enough back that nobody's hitting me and far enough forward that I was able to qualify for the final round. This was the Jump Showdown, a new final game that I hadn't seen just yet. It's different panels of a circle falling with two simple bars attempting to knock you off. The thing that I didn't know is that they'll fall in a way that you'll get isolated from the area that actually is going to stay through, and then you won't be able to get back and you'll get eliminated. I watched for a while though to see some additional strategy on this, and one day, one day that chicken man He's gonna be me. Game 31 was back to gate crash, and despite some early mistimings and bumping my shins off of it, I nailed the final jump. I was able to qualify with only one player left behind me. For the memory game, I'm it's really standing by, stick with the color memorization instead of the fruit. For some reason it doesn't work and it gets super crowded on those platforms when this is round two, but I was able to use that to make my way through and qualify for round three. Round three was team tail tag and you guessed it, I was on the yellow team and I didn't have a tail. Also, I grabbed people with a tail. You can see it here. I did it. I did it more than once. And for some reason, I couldn't get a tail, which meant I got eliminated. But I unlocked the pigeon, so I have that going for me, which is nice. The only notes I have for game 32 are f 
being trampled and each an individual gate i was continuously trounced until i was to the back of the pack and i was immediately eliminated game 33 is back to the hit parade and i was able to make my way through i really feel like i have a good handle on this i'm able to work my way through this area as long as i'm able to avoid those wrecking balls i'm almost certainly going to qualify and for this one i did top 10 round two team tail tag yellow team hopefully i can you know get a tail this time i was able to stay underneath this area for a good while using it to troll a couple other players and have it bop them off in different directions to give me cover but at one point in time i had to make a break for it and was immediately stuck in the grab the tail you grab my tail i grab your tail but we qualified back to the fruit shoot and a quick dive set me off ahead on this one staying off to one side and avoiding any blueberries that might pop into my face i was able to qualify and i think i have this game down pat at this point round three was a brand new game one i hadn't seen before rock and roll where you have to push a ball towards the end of a track and then get to a communal area where you need to get your ball down a hill turns out the first part is really just to slow you down while people attempt to mess with you in the second part and while a bunch of blue team was holding yellow team back and really messing with them we were able to qualify five the final round was the ascent to the crown this was the one i wanted and this is the game i wanted to win on it would feel the most thematically correct i avoided the balls until i really just made some really late mistakes missing the jumps getting hit by the hammers and by then there were so many players that somebody else was able to grab the crown I wasn't going to let that stop me though. In game 34, I was back to the seesaws trying to conquer this nemesis and fight my way through. I had a really solid run on this one actually that I just want to show the whole thing. Qualified first of my round. This is the first time I've done a first place, so that felt good. Back to DoorDash and I was able to actually keep up with everything and once again qualify in the very early players of this round. Normally I hang back. Then off to egg hoarding. I felt really good in the beginning because we were in first place by quite some time, but then all of blue team decided to come in in one go and immediately raid us for all of our resources. I thought we were playing Rust there for a second. They really got most of our eggs and went from first place to last and we were immediately eliminated. Game 35 made me hungry by just thinking about DoorDash a little bit more, but by staying at about the midpoint of the pack, I feel like that's a pretty safe bet. You're not getting trampled in the very beginning, and you're early enough on that you're still gonna qualify for the second round. This one though, I probably cut a little too close. Then it was back to the seesaws. I stayed again in about the middle point of the pack until one bad seesaw had me a little bit frustrated, but I was able to make it through and very quickly had some luck at the very end, emoted my way away with somebody else to join and made it to round three, which was the fruit shoot. Again, I just, I feel like I'm getting the handle of this until that melon came and bopped me in the face. And then shortly after that, another one came his way around and I was eliminated, but I hit level 10 which felt like it was a good sign i was on my way through now while i was playing this i was also taking notes for each individual game and i'm going to be totally honest for game 36 i just kind of forgot that i was playing and was checking on twitter which you should follow me at lagundo and working on the notes for this video so i just kind of didn't play I did at one point realize that I wasn't playing and ran my way through to make it to the point where I was in sight line of the finish line when I was eliminated. After all of that, it was time to really get focused and game 37 was my next shot at claiming the crown. We started with gate crash, working my way through and jumping over the gates. I feel like I have good timing that I'm hitting on the ones that are dropping at the time and that final dash was a quick jump over and I was able to qualify in the top five. Game 37 round two was back to the aim scramble. And guess what? I'm on yellow team, which means I'm probably going to lose in this video is gonna be another 10 minutes longer. But I decided I'm not gonna go capturing anything. I'm just gonna stay on defense with my team. And I was able to do that and we were able to qualify. Round three was fruit shoot. And I thought when I fell off the back here that I was completely boned and not going to survive. But this melon took out a couple of the opposing players and just people got unlucky with the fruit hits and I was able to make my way through to qualify for the next round, which was tiptoe and I used my zen moment of waiting to let everybody get just far enough ahead where they were able to find the path for me where i was not having to worry about getting pushed off and i was the sixth of eight to qualify
Game 37, back to the final round. This time I was not making the same mistake and I was gonna stay on the two partitions of the platform that were gonna stay together. When something fell, I got to the center area and I got down to just three people. As the bars accelerated, we were knocked out one by one and people started dropping. It was getting nervous, my heart was racing. I figured this was gonna be it. This is gonna be my chance. I dived my way through, ducked over one, jumped over others and just fought with this one player until he eventually got clipped by the bar, knocked off and there was my victory. I had finally done it. I had claimed the crown like the king I was, victory was mine. Honestly, this just felt great. I immediately leveled up, so I got a new emote, and I really appreciate the craziness of this game. I'm gonna be in for another challenge, potentially working my way to my second victory, but if you wanna see that, I need to hear from you down in the comments. I'm working on the 200 days video as well, and just have had a lot of fun with this colorful, crazy, cartoonish adventure, which is an excellent departure from the super realistic, ultra modern military hardcore shooters that most battle royales are. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like, leave a comment down below, subscribe if you want to see more craziness like this. Be good to each other, and I'll see you next time.